Hello, this is Mr. Henry, and welcome to lesson 3.1, Geometric Transformation. So we're uh, starting a new module, module 3, that is devoted to geometric transformations, and then we'll get to talk about similar and congruent figures, do a little bit of proportion work, but it's only going to be about four or five lessons, so this unit is going to be quite small. Okay, so the first lesson is the essential question says, how do I identify rotations, reflections, translations, and dilations? Basically, if they give me a picture, how can I figure out the difference between them? And so down here, uh, did you know that video games use transformations all the time? For example, uh, if the first Mario is the pre-image, that's this guy. So the pre-image is called, it's like the original. Pre, that prefix means before. So before anything happened, we have this pre-image. And then each other Mario represents a transformation that's done. So a translation like this is basically if he walked from one place to another. You'll notice it looks exactly the same. It's just a different location on the screen. A rotation, you can kind of probably guess what happened. Or actually, I guess the rotation would be from this one way over here. So it's been rotated, it's been turned. A reflection, if you look at this guy, and if you look at this guy, the reflection, they're facing different directions. So in the original Mario game, if they wanted Mario to run to the right or versus to the left, all they would do is they would just take his little picture like you see here. It's called a sprite. They would take his little sprite, and they would literally just flip it. And then a dilation, the last one, Dilation means to get bigger or smaller, to change the size. So if you've ever been to the, uh, the eye doctor and they put little drops in your eyes, they call it dilating your pupils. They're making your pupils bigger so they can look in the back of your eye easier. It makes the hole in your eye bigger. So it's been dilated. It's been made bigger. There you go. So a dilation is if Mario gets bigger, or even if he gets smaller, if he gets shrunk, that's still a dilation. Okay, so we've got uh, three vocab words here. We've got rotation, reflection, and translation. So let's get to them. A rotation is when a two-dimensional figure is rotated about a point, turned. A reflection is when a two-dimensional figure is flipped across a line. It's like the mirror image. And a translation is when a 2D figure is moved from one place to another, sometimes called a slide. Go ahead and pause the video if you need that. I'm going to move on to the next page. We've got three more vocab words. This first lesson is very vocab intensive. Sorry. Uh, next, we have a dilation. A dilation, I mentioned the Mario, uh, is a rule that moves points in a specific distance determined by a scale factor r and center point o. Essentially, the dilation is the bigger, smaller guy. So, I think of a dilation as like a zoom. Like if you pinch to zoom on a picture. So if I even just here, give me a shape here, some random shape. Some, there we go. Got something interesting. Sort of smiley face. Nah. There. There's a heart. Oh, he, he beautiful. All right. So if I would take this. And I, if you imagine pinching and zooming, that is a dilation. Everything got bigger by the same amount. It didn't get squashed. It didn't get stretched in one direction or another. It's proportionally larger. Or I'm dilating smaller, 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 smaller. That's still a dilation. So it, there's math behind this. Now, I think I can take this, and I'll make this not a dilation. Can I? There you go. Now that's not a dilation. See how stretched out it is? It's not, it doesn't look like the original. Yeah, it's still a heart, but it's now much more stretched out. It's not the same nice, pretty heart. So dilation, dilation, and not dilation. All right, pre-image. The pre-image is the old figure, the original, before the transformation took place. 
typically we'll have the letters will be like A, B, C, D. Where in contrast, the image, which is the after, the image is the new picture after the transformation. And when we announce the, when we label the, the corners or edges, it's like A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Those little, uh, little, I don't know, not quotation marks. I forget what they're called. But they're announced as prime. So A prime. Okay. Kind of like Transformers Optimus Prime. Well, A prime, B prime. So, again, if you need the vocab, go ahead and pause the video. Take a little bit longer. Uh, but we're moving on. So, it says here to describe the given transformations. Use these words rotation, reflection, translation, or dilation, rigid, non rigid, similar, congruent. So you got a whole bunch of words here, and some of them you've never seen before. You haven't seen rigid or non-rigid. You haven't seen similar congruent this year. You saw them last year. Uh, so let's talk about these. So uh, here is my pre-image. So this is the original. So I've got to figure out from this guy right here what's happening to each of these other three. So for example, uh, image A here, this guy. So what's going on from this picture here to get to that picture there? Did it flip across the y-axis? Nah. Did it rotate over there? No. Basically what happened is it just slid. Like this corner just went there. That one went there. That one went there. It's, it looks exactly alike. It's still facing up. It still looks the same. It's just in a different location. So this is a translation okay so you got the first now second set of words rigid or non-rigid well a rigid transformation is a transformation where the shape of the object didn't change it didn't change size it didn't change shape it looks exactly the same is that rigid heck yeah so that guy is a rigid transformation and are those two pictures similar or congruent all right so hopefully you remember the difference between the two similar most people remember the phrase same size i'm sorry same shape different size and congruent is same everything same size same shape they're the exact same picture and if you look at these two between pre-image and image A, uh, they are indeed the exact same picture. They are the same size, they are the same shape. This small side has a length of two, this small side has a length of two. So these are congruent. They are identical. So there we have, first one described, image A was a translation, which is a rigid transformation and our new shape is congruent to the pre-image. All right, sweet. Now I just got to do that a couple more times. Image B. All right, so image B. Let's see. This, well, I, I don't know if it's a transformation or a translation, rotation, dilation, that kind of stuff yet. But I can tell by looking at it that these two shapes are congruent. What we were just talking about. See how this short side is a length of two so this is congruent meaning these guys are the exact same shape and size which also means a rigid transformation happened rigid means hard firm it doesn't bend it doesn't twist um, buildings are rigid a piece of paper is not it's floppy and it, it doesn't keep its shape well, since the shape stayed the same, this was a rigid transformation. All right, so let me erase some of this blue so we can figure out what the heck happened to get from A to B. So, our choices are a translation, a rotation, rotation, 
a reflection or a dilation. So you can kind of use process elimination. It has to be one of those four things. Okay, so did it just slide from here to here? Translation. No, because if it was slid, this pointy side would still be facing up like it is here. That's why this is a translation end. This is not, so it's not translation. Okay, is it a rotation? Did it turn? Well, that's a possibility because now from here the pointy side is up, and then if it turned, the pointy side is down. Hmm, could be. Um, in fact, I think that's kind of what it has to be. It has to be a rotation. It's not a reflection. A reflection would be if it flips like this. See how this one and this one look like mere images across the x-axis? So this would be a flip. This would be a rotation, a turn. So this would be a rotation. And in case you don't know, the rotation would be by 180 degrees. That's half of a circle. I don't think we needed this part, but it's good information to know. All right, letter C. Or do I have space? I'm going to erase A up here. So pause the video if you need it. Too late. All right, image C. So we got our choices over here. Translation, rotation, reflection, or dilation. It is not a translation because it does not look... It's not facing the same way, so that's not happening. So it's not a translation. Rotation. Could I turn this? Uh, I mean, you could try. If you take your paper and turn your whole paper, does it make it look like that? Nah. In fact, I even just said in the last problem, when we're looking at image B, this guy is a reflection. It's a mere image. This point went across the line over there. This one went across the line over there. This one way up here went way down there. That's a reflection. In a mere image. Okay, this is a rigid transformation. The size and shape did not change. The only thing that changed is the position of it on your piece of paper. And for the same reason, because it's a rigid transformation, it is also congruent. So there we have first example. We are able to identify what type of transformation happened. This was a translation. This was a rotation. This was a reflection. Letter B. Same dealio. So this might seem a little confusing. Image A is this little darker uh, quadrilateral inside there, trapezoid in there. So the pre-image is this outside one. Okay, so for image A. Well, image A is not the same size as the rest of them. So that means it had to be a dilation. That is the only thing it could be, is a dilation. Uh, that also means since the size, or the, the shape changed, no, sorry, sorry, the size changed, not the shape. The shape does not change. The size changed, which means this is not rigid. It's non-rigid because the shape of it is not exactly the same as before. Look at it. it it's smaller now which also means these two figures are no longer congruent. Congruent means the same. We are looking at two shapes that are now similar. These shapes are similar to each other. They're not the same. They look the same shape. They are the same shape, but they're different sizes. And we're going to find out here in a few lessons that similar objects are proportionate. They're proportional. So we can actually use proportions to do some cool stuff with them. But that's in the future. Uh, B. 
image B compared with the pre-image, which is this guy here. So from here to here, hmm, it is not a translation. Because it didn't just slide over. Because I'm looking at it like, like this side right here, to me, looks like this side right here. We have the same angle. So that looks like a reflection. And it is. And because it's the same shape, same size, it is a rigid transformation, which means it is congruent. Okay, letter C. Yeah, I'll just do it down here. Do I? Can I? Can I? Yeah. Letter C. All right. So from the pre-image up here to image down there, I'm actually going to keep that red line. I like that red line, and I'm going to find out where this line looks like it is down here. And to me, it looks like it's right there. They're going the same direction, which means it's probably a translation. Pick another line, just if you're not sure. This top line right here, this small line, matches up with this small line. Hey, hey, they're exactly the same picture. They're facing the same direction. The only thing that's different is their location, which is a translation. And because of the same size and the same shape, it is rigid, which means the shape does not change. And because it's the same size and same shape, it is also congruent. So, letter C. We've got one more, I think, of these for us to do together. I think after that we've got one for you to try on your own. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay, so the pre-image is this little guy up here. This is the before. We've got image A over here, image B down here, and image C must be this big guy. All right. So let's start one at a time. And look at image A. So I actually kind of liked what I did before. I'm going to keep doing that trick of just kind of highlighting a side or two. So um, this side here, this uppy downy, out to, I'm going to call it this the tail. I think of this, this will kind of like a, like, like a manta ray sort of thing. So I'm going to do this part down to his tail. Okay, so for image A, to me it looks like this part here down to his tail. It's exactly the same. It's the same place. It's not turned. It's not flipped. It's not anything else. So this would be a translation. Okay, so you've got translation. Now, um, the shape is the same. It is rigid. The shape is the same. It is congruent. 100% identical. Sweet. A. Done. Let's move on to B, and I'll even change the color. Why not? I like blue. It's very nice. All right, so... To get from this one here to this one down here. Well, I guess there's two things that could have happened, actually. Thing number one. You might say, well, this to this looks like this to this. I could see that. You might be right. And would this long one here match up with this long one here? No. No, 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 no. That's not the long side on the top, the long part of the, the manta ray's head. This is over here. So that must mean this is the top. And then the other two sides are here and here. Okay, so now, what happened to get from what we have up here 
to what we have down here. It's not a translation. Is it a reflection? No, no, no. Because if it was a reflection, this up and downy would still be the uppy downy here. So it's not a reflection. A reflection would just be a flip from this side of this x axis, just flipping it down here. That's not what happened. Okay, so it's not a reflection, it's not a translation. The size didn't change, it's not a dilation, so this must have been a rotation. I find students a lot of times have a hard time with rotation. That seems to be the, the hardest for students to recognize and to understand, just because they're, they're not as easy as the other ones. Okay, and rotation, well, the size and shape did not change, so this is rigid and it is congruent. Congruent. All right, and don't use green very often. It's my favorite color after all. Here it is. Let us see. Oh, 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 too much. There you go. All right, get rid of you. Don't need you. Don't need you. Let's get on just the important stuff here. All righty. Now, you probably can do this without even doing much math, just looking at the thing and going, hey, that thing's not the same size as it was. And so you can figure out what type of transformation it was, but in case you can't, uh, they're not the same size. Look, here is the pre-image, those three sides, and here is the new one, those same three sides. You got the long side on the top, the short little upsy downsy, and then out to the tail. So that makes this guy a dilation. Dilation means to make bigger or smaller. It was, it was dilated. You dilate your pupils. It was dilated. Uh, it is not 100% the same, which means this is non-rigid. This is not 100% the same as that. And it also means it is not congruent but it is similar. It's similar because the sizes are proportional. They're proportional. So the one got bigger by, let's say it's five times as big, or whatever it is, maybe three times as big. That's proportional. Okay, they are similar. Okay, example D. So I'd like you to do these problems on your own. So take, and in case you can find it for some reason it was changed, the pre-image is down here. So I want you to pause the video just off the side of your paper like we've been doing. I want you to identify these three images, A, B, and C. Uh, describe them. Was it a rotation, a reflection, a translation, or a dilation? Was it rigid or non-rigid? And was it similar or congruent? Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, take a couple minutes, do them. Uh, when you're ready to come back and go through them together, hit play, and we'll do just that. All right, so let's see here. You should be done by now, or maybe you just need a little check for clarification. So A is a reflection. This short side and this long side match up with that short side and that long side. It was flipped. That is rigid and congruent because they are the same size and same shape. Letter A is done. Letter B. Uh, letter B's up here. All right, so let's see. I'm going to highlight the same two sides. So I've got the short side and the long up B down Z. So there's the short side and the long side. They're in the same exact position. So that is a translation because all that happened is this figure just kind of slid up there. That is a translation. It is rigid and it is congruent. Letter C. Let me 
to fix that. There we go. All right. So for letter C, let's get rid of U, and let's do... Okay, so short side. Oh, he's a little different. So short side is here, and the long flat one looks like it's here. Okay, so... Oh, gosh. Well, he's not a rotation. Oh, uh, he's not a... He could be a rotation. He's not a translation. That was translation. He's not a reflection. That's reflection. If it was a reflection up here, you'd have like short side and long side would be a reflection, and this would be like that. But it's not that. Uh, it's not a dilation because they're the same size, so that must mean it is a rotation. And the same size and same shape, which means it is both rigid and congruent. Very nice, very nice. Hopefully you got them all right. Let's check out some applications. So it says here, uh, an artist sculpts a model of a virus that is a thousand times the size of the normal virus. What type of transformation does this represent and how do you know? So if you have your itty bitty little virus there and the guy makes a model a thousand times as big, and now it's this big honking thing. I don't know, don't viruses look like little spider things? There. He's pretty cool. So, there's my model. It's a thousand times the size of this. It's one thousand times bigger. So, would that be a rotation? No. A reflection? Nah. Translation. Mm -mm. Dilation? Absolutely. And how did you know? Well, because the size changed. A dilation is the only one that makes the size different than the original. So this is a dilation because... Sorry if my head running sloppy. Dilation because the size changed. That's how we knew. That was the thing. That was the clue that told us that it was a dilation because the size was different. All right, so uh, example two here. A car is at a red light. When the light turns green, the car makes a right-hand turn. Okay. Would this be rotation, reflection, translation, dilation, or why? So if you're a very visual person, you'd like to draw a pretty picture of that, sweet. Go for it. So here's a car. Oh, no, like that's not the car. That's the road. And oh, a little fancy red car. Mm, 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 mm. Ain't he be beautiful? All right. So there's my car. He's at this red light. And when the light turns green, he makes a right-hand turn. So this whole thing's gonna fall apart. See? There you go. So. He, light turns green and he makes a right hand turn he's now over here so what kind of transformation was this well yeah you're right it's a rotation it's not a translation translation would have been if he went straight oh so he was here he goes zoom. that's a translation it would be a reflection if uh, I don't know. If right next to him, wait, or duplicate, 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 clone, it'd be a reflection if there is another one right next to him. Flip, left, right. There. That would be a reflection. And it would be a dilation if somehow his car magically grew. Maybe it's a transformer. Now it's big. That would be a dilation. Well, it didn't. It just kind of went around the corner like cars do. So he's rotation. And say, why? Well, I'm just going to put like it turned or something. It turned. Where you say it rotated, it spun. 
Uh, to see. James traces the shape of a picture of a dragon on tracing paper. Okay. If James moved this paper in any direction, including turning, flipping the paper over, blah, 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 would this be a rigid transformation? Okay, so if you imagine James has a piece of paper, and on this piece of paper he has a wonderful picture of a dragon. All right. So there we go. There is James's dragon. Now, if you have this piece of paper, could you do... Oh, let's see. Would this be a rigid transformation? So is there any way, taking this piece of paper, you can change the size or shape of that? And we're not talking about ripping it up in little pieces. We mean, like, if you actually take the paper, can you make the paper bigger? Can you make the paper smaller? Can you... <gasps> Do anything that would actually change the size and shape of that, apart from destroying the paper? The answer is no, you can't. I mean, you could take the paper and you can turn it. There, now it's an upside down dragon. It's still the same shape and size. It's a rigid transformation. That was a rotation. You can take the picture of the dragon, you can hand it off to your friend. Now it's over there. That would be a translation. You could take the picture of the dragon and you can flip it over. Flip. Left, right. There he is. Now he's facing right instead of facing left. Still the same dragon. So there's really nothing you can do that would make this a non-rigid transformation. So would this be a rigid transformation? Yes, it is rigid. And how do we know? I'm going to start typing. It's going to be quicker than me writing this out by hand. How would we know? Because it is the same size and shape or because it is always the same size and shape. I like that. So it's always the same size and shape. There's no way you can take the paper and make that dragon have a different shape apart from ripping the paper, tearing it up. There's no way you can make the dragon bigger on that piece of paper or smaller apart from crumbling it up in a little ball and then it's not a dragon anymore. It's just a ball of paper. So, yes, it is a rigid transformation and that's why. Okay, here's letter D for you to try on your own. It says, Pat constructed a triangle out of popsicle sticks. He then made a new triangle that is similar but not congruent to the original. What type of transformation did Pat have to do and why? So go ahead, pause the video, go ahead and put your thoughts down, try it on your own. When you're ready, continue, hit play, and we'll go through it together. All right, so um, if you made a little sketch, it said that he had this triangle made out of popsicle sticks. So there's one, two, three. Then he made a new triangle that is similar but not congruent. So you got to figure out, you got you had to think back, what's the difference between similar and congruent? Well, similar triangles are not the same size. They are different size. So either he made a teensy tiny tiny little guy or he made a big huge monster triangle. Either way, it's not the same size. So what type of transformation did it take to get from either this to this or that to that? And the answer is, well, it had to be a dilation. Because that's the only one that changes the size of the object. So it had to be a dilation. Why? The size is different. That's why. All right, so uh, example 2E says the pre-image of triangle ABC has an area of 9 feet squared. And if you want, you can label him off to the side over there. 9 feet squared. The image is then flipped across the Y axis, then rotated 45 degrees. 
what is the area of image A, B, A prime, B prime, C prime? Okay, so you're trying to find the area of this guy. So go ahead, pause the video, try this on your own. When you're ready to continue, hit play, and we will go through it together. Okay, so um, hopefully you said the answer is 9 feet squared. Your first thought probably was something along the lines of, how the heck am I supposed to figure out the area of this new triangle? I don't know anything about the original guy. I don't know the, the height, the base, the formula. Well, the formula's on your formula sheet, if you didn't know. But we actually didn't need all that. So if you looked at it in more detail, you go, okay, this guy, the first one, the original pre-image, has an area of 9 feet squared. And then this was taken, and it was flipped across the y-axis then rotated 45 degrees. Anywhere in that chain of events did the size or shape of the triangle change? Did it get bigger or smaller? No. So the size and shape is the same, which means the area is still the same. So the new triangle still has an area of 9 feet squared. And there we have it. All right, so uh, example F says, uh, Jose is a cartoonist drawing an apple. Between two frames of our cartoon, the size and shape of the apple don't change. But how it looks on the page does, or how it looks on the page is different. What transformations could have been done to the apple? So go ahead and pause the video and try the problem on your own. Make some sketches if you need to. When you're ready to continue, hit play, and we'll go through it together. Okay, so uh, I'll make like a nice green apple here, or hopefully nice green apple. Beautiful. Alright, so uh, he could have taken this apple and he could have just slid it across a page, maybe like a scroll was carrying it or something. So a transformation could have been done. Okay, how else can I move this apple without changing the size and shape? Well, I could take this apple and I can go like this. There you go. The size, the shape didn't change. So a rotation happened. rotation. Or I could have taken this apple and I could flip it around. Maybe I'll flip it up and down. There we go. So that would be a reflection, a mere image of itself. Like that. So it's flipped. Maybe you see the reflection of it under the water. Ooh, that's interesting. So a reflection could have happened. Um, just for completeness, that is not allowed. Because it says here the problem that the size and shape of the apple don't change, but how it looks on the page is different. So a dilation, this guy here, could not have happened. Delete. So the other three, it could have been a transformation, a rotation, a reflection, or all of them. You can have a combination of those things that would change the size and shape of the apple. So, for the summary, um, it's a Collins Type 2. It says, what is the difference between a rotation, reflection, and translation? So, go ahead. Um, well, I guess do the problem on your own. Pause if you need a bit longer. It's on Schoology. Um, but, um, yeah, this has been Lesson 3.1. Thanks for watching.